Good day and welcome to today's webinar. Our topic for the session is delivering an exceptional customer experience with embedded analytics. My name is Sean Deegan, and I'm the general manager for Yellowfin's EMEA business, based here in London, England, and today I'm joining you from the home office. Yellowfin is a global analytics vendor based in Melbourne, Australia, and we've been around since 2004. Over the years, we've had some great industry recognition. 2020 marks the seventh consecutive year we've been in Gartner's Magic Quadrant. This year, we actually moved into the visionary sector, which reflects our huge commitment and continued investment in innovation. Today's session is for product managers and owners who have an existing solution where there's an interest in delivering additional data features and services to their users. Analytics provides the lens for your customers to understand their business better through your application data. When we ask software vendors why they're considering embedding or why they've decided to embed analytics into their product, we see some consistency. We see some internal drivers, and that might be looking at additional revenue streams by you know, adding a module or a new service to their product. We see focus. We see lots of organizations saying, I'm going to focus my internal resources on building core IP, core intellectual property, and anything that I can look at that's more available and easy to access uh, in the market, I'm going to bring that to the table. Or I want to bring some innovation and some new features to increase the value of my product in the market. For a lot of the software companies that have been around for a while, we see a competitive um, parity and looking at up and comers. What are they doing around the user experience? How are they handling data? How are they handling analytics? And then we see the influence from the analyst community. What is the segment that you're in? What, what are the kind of core aspects that the product should have today? What should they have in the future? Where should we be investing? And most importantly, what are customers asking for? What do they need? What do they want? So if you dig into you know, what do customers want, what they say is we need better reporting. But that, that doesn't necessarily explain the actual requirements of what they're asking for. Essentially, we see a myriad of things that kind of you uncover as you, as you dig deeper. We see a lot of customers asking for data extracts. They're asking for new things to be added to reports. I, my business is a little bit different from everybody else. And you end up having you know, custom or bespoke builds for a lot of customers. Uh, you push a lot of things to professional services. Uh, it pushes a lot of load and complexity to the support organization. I think it's really interesting to look at where the high value work is being done. If they're asking for extracts, are they, are they making decisions outside of your application? When you get into the operational reporting requirements so that day-to-day -day interaction with data, you start to examine you know, what are they actually trying to do? What are they doing next? They see a report, they see a visualization, they see a dashboard. What, what are they trying to do? And thinking about what is that next step? We see you know, the, the swivel chair, the copy and paste, the you know, uh, I saw something interesting, but I didn't take action. I sat on it, or I had to message somebody through email or a collaborate, collaboration platform. You see the need to improve the ability to bring data to decision making, so simplify how you're making decisions and using data to support them. What are those workflows? What's the business process associated with finding that one thing, and what do I do with it next? Very consistently, we hear the need to improve the time to react. So if there's something that happens in the business, how long does it take for someone to be alerted? How long does it take for change to be made in terms of the, the business process so that it doesn't happen again? From a management and optimization perspective, you know, can we help improve their business with your product? So can that end customer understand their business better with the data from your platform. So if it's retail or healthcare or something, can they actually use that, de that data to make better decisions? How easy is it for them to get that data? 
can they access ratios and KPIs to improving the processes that they're um, using every day from your tool? Can they compare how they're doing against other competitors? Can they look at those industry benchmarks? Can they look at that cohort analysis? How am I doing it versus my peers? When it boils down to it, I think it ties to business outcomes and ROI. So can you actually show the ROI on your product? Can you get that data? Out? Can, you, can you show that they've actually used that data to make better decisions? Can they, have they made improvements? Can they actually execute on that commitment to the improved business outcome? I think visibility to the product usage. So uh, we're all worried about um, access, uh, consumption, uh, adoption. Can you show that there's you know, an increased adoption by using your product successfully uh, and, and tying the value that they're paying, um, you know, the, the fees associated with your product? Can they actually show that in terms of you know, their usage and the outcomes that are associated with it? And essentially, you know, the, the constituents that we're dealing with, we want to make sure that their bosses are successful. So giving them, you know, data to support, you know, the decision making and the, the recommendations that are provided as a part of your application use cases. So what are the possible solutions? So we see kind of three main categories. We say, well, let's give the data to the customer. Let, let's let them build. You know, BI tools are pretty pervasive these days. Let's just give them an extract. Let's give them a data API. And I think the biggest challenge that I see with this one is that you know, are there you know, high value, um, very important decisions being made outside of your platform, outside of your application? I think one of the strategies is to bring that decision making, to sit, bring that high value work into your application flow and really tie that to the business outcomes associated with your product. We see build it yourself. There's lots of um, you know, open source, there's libraries, JavaScript libraries, there's all kinds of cool stuff that are out there in the market that you can build some really cool visualizations. Where this starts to break down is the flexibility and the scale. What happens if a customer wants something a little bit different? What if they want to do some self-service? What if, what if they start to ask questions around security, um, privacy? Uh, what if they're asking for how do you handle multi-tenancy? How do you how do you support you know, some of these things in, at scale? Uh, and you know we definitely see the flexibility and the scalability as core reasons why you look at a third option. So embedding something that's available on the market. There's some really good options that have been available uh, and continue to be um, you know investments from um, you know, vendors that are doing this all day long and looking at how do I take advantage of uh, those uh, innovations into my, my product. At the end of the day, the customer has an anchor point. They have a reference to what they expect when they're working with data. They see what's uh, available from other software uh, with embed analytics. They see um, you know, what's available from other enterprise BI tools. The freemium model with some of the, the products out there, including the Office 365 subscription, those tools are great, they're everywhere. And they have an expectation of what um, you know, is possible when you're looking at data. Uh, and then I think, you know, what are the competitors doing? So looking at some of the up-and-comers and some of the ones that are, are, are leading the way around interaction with data. But at the, end of, at the end of this, we see that all customers are really looking and expect an enterprise-grade solution. I talk to software companies all day long, and I think you know, when we, we get into this conversation, I definitely see some patterns and the drivers that are really pushing them to seriously consider embedding an analytics product uh, into their solution are, you know, they understand the importance of data. They really get it, and they're like, hmm, how do I, how do I take advantage of some of the things that are out there that I can go faster? Um, there's a big trend around modernizing and transforming uh, to a SaaS type of offering, especially for legacy software companies. When we're moving from that on-prem, that perpetual mode, to something that's subscription centrally managed. We see limited resources, so everyone is busy. How do we actually focus the dev cycles on the core IP that's associated with your product? Uh, and I think that's, you know, even when there's you know, a, a 
a challenge on budget uh, from adding resources. Uh, even, if, even if that's lifted, how long does it take to you know, attract and hire and train and onboard somebody to help them do that work? Time to market, so the velocity of change is incredible these days. It's not slowing down. Uh, continuous uh, improvement and you know, DevOps you know, rule the kind of the velocity in, in the agility in software companies today, expecting builds to be pushed daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, and that's not slowing down. And then the huge risk around security and privacy. And you know, when you're talking about data, am I introducing something that could potentially uh, create problems for me as an organization as I, as I scale? So when we actually look at some of the, the core things, we actually built a couple of um, documents that are available through Yellowfin's website and the links below. Um, and I think you know, we have some experience in this. 50% of our, our clients are doing this every day. Uh, and we're bringing that to the table through some of the white papers that we're mentioning on, on today's webinar. Uh, this would be one that I'd recommend, how to deliver modern dashboards that automate action. What can I build? So as you start to get into the part of the possible, we see uh, lots of service companies and um, people that have subject matter expertise in a particular area building these data apps. A good example is uh, one of our, our customers in the Netherlands that has built a VAT compliance module for customers running Oracle Financials. So essentially they've built a bunch of preset reports and analytics that tie very quickly into that type of customer and they're able to help solve that problem very, very quickly. We see more of a common kind of integrated reports and dashboards, uh, more white labeled kind of um, incorporating that into your application and then adding some premium type of features like self-service and maybe some alert based analytics. We also see a trend in point in time data journalism, um, which would be more um, relevant when you're the data storytelling. So being able to, to share opinion and facts uh, based on, on data and, and using that as a way to uh, show credibility and ensure that your, your commentary is safe and trusted. When you look at you know, analytics companies, we see um, some, some regular um, needs and we've categorized them in the following. So we've got the traditional, we've got the more modern, we've got augmented, we've got collaborative. I think as you start to, to break those down, you know, the traditional tends to be more the tabular reports, some of the basic broadcasts and scheduling, you know, the export to spreadsheets. And you, you tend to see things like this that are very kind of uh, tabular, uh, they're very um, you know, kind of um, complicated to look at. You almost have to take a class to understand what they're saying. What we're seeing now is a real push to building uh, exceptional kind of user experiences around rich UI making things very easy to use, um, self-explanatory, using great graphics, matching your brand, having things that are um, tied to um, you know, alerting and, and automation. And, and I think you, know, you tend to um, you know, need to share that with somebody. What are you doing with the information you've captured? You're sharing that in, in stories or management decks and being able to, to use um, the collaboration to take action on that, those insights. Um, we've got a great white paper that's tied to you know, comparing uh, the, the different vendors that are out there and what they can do in terms of uh, helping you solve your requirements. Definitely check that out. So I think when you um, go to the next level like how do they want to deliver how do how do software companies you know want to deliver some of those key features do they want to start from scratch no, no one wants to start from scratch these days i think we see a pattern of saying hey let's build 80 percent of the you know the kind of core best practice set of functionality that's associated with these, these reports or dashboards or, or analytics i'm going to provide the ability for you know users you know uh, customers to, to change those out of, out of the box reports and then maybe even create some of their own reports. 
um, but creating that, that have that flexibility to deliver something that they can be more um, drive their own destiny and, and, and derive the value in your product versus extracting it and doing it somewhere else. Um, when we look at you know the ability to innovate with your data, we definitely see some you know, consistency around the types of things that um, software companies are looking for. You know, there's the basic data, so that dashboard and that insight, so more the the traditional kind of view in in the, the kind of the everyday data. Um, as you move to a centrally managed infrastructure, looking at SaaS or um, you know that kind of managing in the cloud. We see the network effect, so the cohort analysis, the ability to compare against your peers. Uh, we see the ability to, uh, you know, enrich the data sets that uh, you have, and whether it's, you know, for a very simple example would be as if it's retail data and adding, you know, weather information or, you know, third-party, um, you know, spend information from a credit card company to track what people are doing uh, after or before they've purchased from. Um, your site. Uh, and then we see some of the cool, um, you know, more fancy stuff around predictive and automation uh, and ML and data science and saying, you know, how do we, how do we actually help these companies make better decisions with the data that they've got? There's some core benefits that are associated with embedding analytics. Um, adding that strategy into your product, I think, you know, can lead to a stickier and better customer experience where they're doing, you know, more of that high value work inside of the context of your application. Uh, there could be new products and services, so potential new revenue streams that are associated with that. Uh, competitive advantage, um, you know, proof points for, you know, what your core value prop is, so helping the sales team execute on that vision around um, business outcomes and pro providing the data that proves that you were able to achieve that ROI. Uh, what you need from an embedded analytics product, these are, these are things that we hear uh, very regularly that are not necessarily associated with an analytics solution. These are more around what are the kind of the, the core attributes associated, what are, the, what are the things you need from a technical fit perspective. So the ability to white label and match your branding requirements, flexible deployment options, so running the analytics uh, product right beside your solution, whether that's on-prem, in the cloud, hybrid, public cloud, private cloud, all those different options, having the flexibility to deploy it as you need. Ensuring that the solution has uh, robust security so you're not opening up vulnerabilities in the future. Lots of different uh, integration options where you've got the ability to add a single component or provide a more rich experience around self-service uh, and a combination of all of the above. One thing that gets overlooked quite, quite often is you know, the management scale, so the total cost of ownership. So how complex is this thing to scale out as you're looking at you know, five, 10 customers when you start to scale it to you know, 600, 4,000, 10,000 customers, how easy is it to manage? And what does that look like from a, a resource perspective on your side? And then a partner and a solution provider that's really committed to innovation so that you can benefit from their R&D and add those interesting things to your product strategy as your product evolves and as your partner evolves. So we've actually captured a lot of these things in our, um, our guide to embedding analytics. They talk, uh, this, this guide talks quite a bit about uh, different ways you can look at, you know, the kind of core features versus add-on uh, for fee premium type options. Um, key things that are associated with the um, the technical integration, uh, and it's a great resource for those considering uh, an analytics option for um, your product. Check it out on our website. Yellowfin provides uh, the building blocks for you to actually to do some really interesting things, and we uh, provide a, a great way to um, handle some of the standard things like dashboard and, and visualizations, but bringing that data to life in, in a way that we match your, your brand and your user experience that you've built for your product and with no limitations, literally pixel perfect type of design. The automation analysis, um, we see some key features that we've brought to the table around looking at and predicting some of the things that 
a kind of common analysis and bringing that in a, in a more of a regular, consistent manner so that we're alerting people you know, sooner and taking, so that they can take action and hopefully reduce cost or, or make decisions to you know, optimize margin or increase revenue or reduce churn. Uh, we've got an amazing no-code, low-code app development environment uh, that has been recently um, uh, released and it allows you to build some amazing um, interactions with your application or third parties to drive that action and that integration of how do you think about the, the business process and shrink those next step workflows to reduce error, to reduce the time to act and improve the overall consumption of uh, the, the data elements that you're providing to your users. And, and then I think the data storytelling side is, shouldn't be neglected. The ability to take those insights and the things that you've identified and then share that with others in a way that you can provide context and, and, and recommendations and take action on that insight from um, a people perspective. So not having to teach them how to use a complicated dashboard, but sharing those insights in a way that they consume it more in a blog style or a presentation that they're more accustomed to. And then adding some of the more advanced uh, data science things that are happening in potentially in your organization or in the market, adding those into um, the delivery mechanism, delivery mechanism associated with Yellowfin around the productionalization of some of these models uh, and, and supporting some standards like PMML, PFA, um, you know, that are, are very common with, um, you know, building things with R or, or Python. Um, and tools like H2O.ai supporting those and augmenting your apps around the um, prediction and benefiting from some of these really cool technologies. Uh, we cover a bunch of questions that are uh, normally associated with how do you use these things in normal deployment, uh, integration options in our um, evaluation guide. So go check that out on our website. Uh, you can ask uh, lots of questions uh, through our community uh, and we're here to help. Um, so when I, when I look at Yellowfin, I, I kind of boil it down to kind of six kind of key areas. Um, one, Yellowfin provides dashboards that are really impactful through the ability to, to um, design and build uh, user experiences that literally don't have any um, you know, graphical um, limitations, so pixel-perfect type of design. Uh, and really thinking about what comes next. So building those actions and thinking about the workflow in that business process. Um, we have a huge commitment as you've seen with our uh, moving into the uh, visionary quadrant uh, with Gartner, uh, our commitment to innovation and thinking about you know, what comes next. You, you, know, you build out the, the current set of features in, in your product and looking at the next sprint, the next release, and how do you continue to evolve and benefit from our R&D and our innovation. Uh, massively scalable, so we've got some clients that are running you know, tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of users, uh, so we can scale both uh, vertically and horizontally. Uh, we support uh, containerization, so for those um, you know, infrastructure requirements around optimizing cloud cost control, uh, we're able to fit into that world really nicely. Uh, all wrapped with enterprise-grade security, so you've got you know, fine-grained permission control around um, you know, the access to making sure that the, the, the wrong customer doesn't see the wrong data, the wrong user doesn't see the wrong data. And very important as you move into multi-tenancy environments and making sure that the wrong customer doesn't see another customer's data. Uh, and then we've got um, you know, an open approach, so no proprietary lock-in, so you can deploy Yellowfin on Windows or Linux or in a container. So the option is yours, and we'll follow your deployment um, architecture so we can be deployed on-prem or in the cloud or in, in a hybrid kind of mechanism. So how do we start? Um, and I think, you know, what do you need to get started? And, and really, I think it's, it's, it's conceptualizing what are the data sets that you have and that you want to expose. Um, you know, what are the core skill sets that your team you know, has internally? Um, looking at what, what are the tools that are out there on the market? Uh, and then really thinking about the, the mindset that is required to deliver a great analytic experience. Um, and the elephant, because we do this all the time, you know, we've got literally have thousands of ISV customers that um, we've built a, 
methodology. We call it the, the Yellowstone Launchpad approach. Uh, and it's a, a way that we help customers, software, primarily software com- customers, get to that MVP state as soon as possible uh, and make sure that you know, we're sharing our best practices and our lessons learned so you're not painting yourself in the corner from an integration standpoint or security or a scalability standpoint. So in summary, uh, we've got three takeaways. One, uh, by embedding a analytics product into your solution, we feel that you can uh, increase your competitive advantage, we can modernize your app, we can increase uh, customer loyalty, uh, and you know, we can help you innovate. The second takeaway is you know, embedding a, an analytics product you know, can increase that workflow efficiency. So thinking about what does a user do next? How do, they, how do you remove that uh, human error by cutting and pasting or waiting for some, someone to be notified and you know, send an email and respond to the email? So how do we actually optimize that and look at the efficiencies associated with the workflow? The third one, uh, really partnering with a leading um, product that you know, helps you stay ahead of the competition. And you know, with Yellowfin, you know, our analytics solution really um, is committed to innovation and helps you know, provide new exciting features um, you know, quarterly that we're able to kind of add into um, your, your strategy and your roadmap. Uh, finally, I'd recommend that you, um, you know, the call to action would be to take a look at um, one of our videos on our website. It's a 20 minute video that explains, you know, how um, you know, business users, end users are able to interact uh, with an amazing uh, product uh, that delivers you know, an exceptional experience around data. Uh, and, you know, again, you know, take a look at for the more for the technical minded folks. Take a look, look at our evaluation guide. This digs into some of the deployment scenarios, some of the questions that are commonly asked around how do you integrate with this or do you support that. I uh, highly recommend you check that out. Well, that's it. Thank you very much for spending some time with us today. And we really look forward to um, you know, figuring out a way to help you unlock some of the key capabilities uh, of our solution and help you innovate and deliver an exceptional experience around you know, data to your customers. Thanks.